Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield. You may, like me, have driven by these buildings on North Street a dozen times without having any idea what is inside Cast Industries. Well, it's a leader in the fishing equipment industry, and now that they have their online business, they're supplying fishing equipment to more than 50 countries around the world. Well, Jim Stevens, your, your dad started this business in a two-car garage at his home, I guess. Is oh, that yes. Right? Uh -huh. And now here you are on North Street. You've not only expanded to this building, but in the building across the street. And you've taken that fishing equipment business and turned it, grew it pretty good, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. I want, to yeah. show, I want to show some of the products okay. that would be available that, that, you, that your crew here that we, that we at, make, uh, yes. yeah, at Cast Industries created. These are uh, some of the, what your capabilities are. Uh, these are mostly jigs, which is what you concentrate on a lot, lead casting products. There's a beauty right there, that little, that's a sweetheart. Um, but what we're going to do during this program is show how you do it. All righty. The whole process of, of making fishing equipment from scratch. Okay. And I chose this room because, actually, I guess you'd have to say the process starts here with, starts with a mold, here. doesn't it? Yes, it does. Show, show us what all these, I mean, we're in a whole room. It looks like old film canisters. Uh, yeah, they you know? do, they do. But these are all silicone molds. Uh, th this is what uh, houses the impression for making this type of stuff. And so this silicone mold will have uh, a a bunch of cavities of the exact same item in it. Mm -hmm. For this item is a classic spinnerbait we make for Man's Bait Company, been around for a very long time. Um, so what this is, is the, we'll, we'll put the supplies in here, meaning the wires and the hooks and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put the lid on it and they pour lead into it and it centrifugally fills all the cavities, which we'll be showing you here in just a very short time. Okay, so uh, over your shoulder here, we can see some of the finished product and we're gonna show how you turn something like piece of lead that goes in there into this these are uh, these are jigs I guess you yes. call them right mm -hmm. colorfully painted with the eye every every fishing lure seems to have to have an eye on it for some reason and these are ready to ship out I guess aren't they yes they are okay so the process starts with the mold which we see a whole room full of molds oh, everyone's different thousands and thousands <laughs> of different items it's, I don't know how you keep track yep, of it all I know but let's let's see how, how it works let's take us in here um, we go from the molding area now, right now, you're not super busy. You've got some of your, some of your, uh, uh, what are these called? These, these are casters? centrifugal casting casters. machines. Some of them are sitting idle. Yeah. Some of them are idle because when you get busy, then you'll call in more people and you'll have these yes. working as well, right? Yes. But, but this is the process and it starts over here with the mold. And we can see what she's doing with that right now. She's picking up an empty one right now. And what's, what's happening here is the girls are sitting here putting all the supplies into the molds, uh, hooks and wires and um, whatever is necessary. So they'll fill all the, they'll put all the hooks in there. Uh -huh. And she knows, b based on the order that she's received, what size hook. Absolutely, we've already pre-pulled out all the different supplies necessary for all the different items that uh -huh. that, that she her, is running. Okay. And they just sit there, fill the molds all day, and. Let's move down here a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now she seems to have a different kind of a task because she's got different parts to put in there. A little not different item, books. yes. Describe to me what the parts are that she's using. Well, what she's doing here is she has a, a separate eyelet that, that we're connecting the hook to and, uh, and then also a separate eyelet for, to tie the line onto. So this, this particular item will have the, the hook that is, is a very loose hook on the bait. Mm -hmm. Generally, like a jig, the hooks are casted into the lead, but in this particular item, it's that, that hook is going to swing loose mm -hmm. afterwards. So she's got to set all the little parts and pieces in there. And that'll all be joined together and covered in with the lead, right? So it all sort of becomes one piece. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. That. Um, now, that's what this operation is all about here. I, I can see bars of lead over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must be one of your one of your major product expenses. Well, absolutely, it sure is. Lead has become very expensive, especially mm -hmm. in the last few years. But uh, 
Um, we have the molten lead there, and then what these machines are doing are, uh, are holding the molds closed and then spinning them. So that's where the centrifugal spin casting comes in. Uh -huh. And then uh, once they put the, the mold in the machine and then uh, close the door, it'll, the machine will turn on. They'll pour in a predetermined amount of lead and uh, okay. it now runs is he, for... Is he going to pour some lead here pretty soon? Because I yeah. want to see that. Let's see if we can show him pouring that lead. That's molten lead. How, how hot is that lead? It's about 750. Most of the lead's at 750 degrees. We wow. also we also pour in uh, in tin and in bismuth as well. They're just alternative metals uh -huh. to, to, to the to the fishing. Uh -huh. And and w what works best? I mean, are they all? Well, they all work? It, it's it's a function of cost in a lot of cases. What works best is the lead, and, uh -huh. and it's also because it's the you know the least expensive. Uh -huh. You know, uh, some of your alternatives are very very expensive. I think we're going to get a chance to see him empty one of these. He can see that mold that, uh, that she was just loading with all them little okay. brass eyelets in there. It's going to come out right here. Okay, and that's the very one we just saw loaded. Boy, that didn't take long. No. Okay, he frees it up there. And that's not too hot to handle. I'm kind of surprised. No, it's it, the, the lead would be right now. If you actually touched it, it would be uh, it would be a little bit warm to the to the yeah, touch. But he knows what he's doing. He knows what to touch and what not. Yeah, to you touch. do it a couple times yeah. to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you burn yourself, and yeah. that's all it takes. What is amazing is we very rarely have anybody put a fish, fish hook in their skin. Yeah, and that is amazing because I, I yeah. fish enough to know that those things are so sharp oh. that it's almost inevitable that you're going to get going to get stuck. I know, but it's just it they're, doesn't they're, happen. They're good. They're yeah. good. And what are these little wheels that, that we see? Well, up that's here? the uh, that's part of the the molding process. That's just the excess in order for us to distribute the lead out to the baits. That's that's how it happened. Oh, okay. It, it, all right. You know the you can we, say we had that, to feed huh? all the little lead. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It goes right back into the melting okay. pot. Okay. All right. You know. And we can see here by the by these boxes that he has in front of him here that he's working on a number of different orders here. Each oh, one's absolutely. different. Each one's a different size. Sure. And in his case, he's got six different items going at the same time. So every time he puts something in the machine, he's got a you know a different item coming out of it. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. And, and then he is, even trims it up a little bit because some of them have little edges. Well, a little, little bit of flashing yeah. now and then that he'll, uh, that he'll clean up real quick, you know. Just. Just, okay, so what happens next? Th these ladies are doing the same thing, right, that was oh, going on over they're here? They're so all these, doing the same thing. Uh -huh. It's just they're, they're building something different. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, it's just, it's, just it's, it's a jig. Um, different supplies going into it, different shape. Uh, you know, it's a tiny little things to larger saltwater items that are being produced. Okay, Jim, now we've just finished the casting process, yes. right? Okay. Now this kind of looks like a finished product, but, and it might be for some orders, but not for every order, because there's a lot more has to be done to these products. Right. All of these products. <laughs> what happens at this station? Well, all we're doing here is we're keeping track of, uh, of all the orders that have come through the casting department. They have to get... Uh, Everything has to get counted, verified we made the right amount of product. Um, and then here at this point, we have to determine where it's going. Is it being shipped out in the raw stage, or is it going to get painted? And mm -hmm. if it's going to get painted, which paint department does it go into? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's all that's doing here is we're keeping track of all the castings that have been produced um, every day and divvying them out to where, wherever they belong. Okay. To what so, so this young lady, is she's a control, she actually controls this part of the inventory and routes it to where it needs to go Correct. next. And okay. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. So the next for many of these is painting, right? Uh, the majority of them, yes. Well, let's let's. And I think mm -hmm. that's going on right now. Here's, yeah, this is one of our processes. Uh, we have a, a, a nice little machine that we've designed and built ourselves to uh, to to paint. It's all this machine is all designed to paint little things, little items. So uh -huh. here we are hanging some, you know, very some round head jigs. Uh, mm -hmm. These are shipping to a company in Arkansas to go into some kits. So we have about, I don't know, about 80,000 of these to make for them. Uh -huh. And what they're doing here is they're just hanging them on, on, the, on the hooks right. and they'll continue on down the line. And here we're applying a powder paint to them. And, this, and, for this and that's, particular what, one that's is, what this machine here does? Yes, powder paint. Yes, and this, in this case it's just, a, it's just a gloss black being mm -hmm. applied to them right here. Yeah, you can certainly on the heads. You can see on the heads down here that it's done a pretty mm -hmm. thorough job. Yeah, every one. Huh? Yeah. 
You might use a different colored paint, but this this, oh, this bunch is black. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There are probably 35 or 40 different powder paint colors. Uh -huh. And uh, so what, as they continue on, they're going through the, uh, the infrared lamp that are going to warm that bait up and, and cure that powder paint. So we have a, it's a two-step process. We're going to hit them real hard here with some, some high electricity and some lamps, and uh, that'll, that'll get the process started, and then here it, it'll finish the, the baking well, you can of them. see here where they got so hot they're smoking. Oh, they're starting to yeah. smoke there, yeah. yeah. That's what you want, huh? Yep. Okay, and, and the secondary process, it's what just, does this one do? This, it's the same thing. It's just, it's at a lower, uh, at a lower level, uh -huh. uh, light level, so it's, uh, it's just going to keep that bait at a, at a nice hot temperature mm -hmm. for the, for the um, 14 feet that it needs to go through to, to cure it out. Okay. Once they've gone down through the lamps, they'll come back here, and at this point, they're just going through cool down, and, because uh, they, they do get hot, to, you know, but, yeah. Well, can I, can I, I, you were able to touch it. Yeah, it's still oh, warm. Yeah, no, it's, it's still warm. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. It's a small part, so it cools down pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, but they're painted gloss black, at, at, and, uh, and as soon as they come over here, they'll throw them into some tubs. And, and this is just a matter of giving them some air and some time. That's all it so is. when they come down, they're cool enough to, to package up. And that's what this young man is doing here, huh? Yeah, we don't have to count them because there's so many of them. We'll just, we'll just throw them in a tub. What he's doing, he's just looking at them, making sure that we didn't fill the eyes of the hooks or we didn't get paint all over the wrong part of right. it. Another uh, inspection process. Right. Yep. And then so at this point, they'll just throw them into the tubs and then we'll weigh count. Okay, Jim. Now we've seen the the, the uh, powder coating. What's going on here? Well, not everything can get powder coated, so we have we, we do a lot of liquid painting as well. Uh, in, in most cases, we do need to apply the primer coat to the bait, which is generally white. Okay. Um, and it requires a couple coats of white to be put on it, uh, and then we can start adding the additional colors once the white's been applied and cured out. Okay. Now the young man over there, he's using a brownish color. Is that? That's already already been primed, and he's adding some additional. Well, to it. what he's doing here is uh, he's creating a two-tone bait. So he's having to uh, touch the uh, the brown. The, the customer wants an orange bottom with a brown top on it. Oh. Okay. So he's applying the brown to the top of it. Uh -huh. A customer can get whatever darn oh, color boy. they want. Can't yeah. They? <laughs> it's, sky's the limit. You know. Okay, but most of the most of the primer, most of the base is, is white. That's what most of your, your yes. baits will be. Uh -huh. Yeah. But fishing lures are all painted with uh, very brilliant colors, you know, yeah. fluorescent colors. Well, so speaking of which, I mean, look look to your left here. Look yeah. look at the. These are some of the varieties. Of course, fishermen see these colors all the time. There's well, always chartreuse and that. Yeah. These are all slated to be chartreuse once uh, once they get through the stage. The racks have all been painted for because of the different colors that they've gone through. But yeah. these are all this. All these are going to be painted chartreuse. So, but they need the white base coat to be applied first. Yeah. Hey, have you ever stopped to think of wonder how many colors you might offer? Oh gosh. You know, it, it really, there's probably 50 or 60 yeah. different colors. Yeah. And it, the combinations are endless. You know. Luckily, fishing lures are very gen I wouldn't say generic, but chartreuse, red, white, black. You know, it's, it's the real common. Yeah. Now things are starting to get kind of fun. I mean, we're getting well, away from the pure white, aren't we? Well, here we're starting to get a little more intricate in the in the paint schemes, uh, applying just little colors to specific places on the lure. Sometimes they'll get three, four different colors put on. It starts to get pretty intricate. How does she make everyone exactly the same? You just get used she to just doing good it. At yeah, it. you just, just get good, good at it. Yeah. And she's making them, they kind of look like minnow colors now. They certainly look like yeah, that. Yeah. Let's take a look at this, Jim, close up here. Sure. And you've got one out for us, one that she had just completed. Yeah, she just sprayed this one. And you can see where we have the, the black fading into the green uh -huh. down to the white. It's amazing that they're, they, they look identical, that she's able to do that with that little, mm -hmm. little spray gun. Wow. And yeah. look at, look at all, all that's going on over here now. She has, are these trays that she's gotten they're, uh, from, from the station yeah, we were just at? Yeah, they're, they here. come out of the, the paint shop out here to the to the next step of it, which is applying the the next colors. Uh, so she'll put on all the little, what we call splashes in the back colors uh -huh. and so on and so forth. And then they'll then they'll head over into what we call IDOT. Yeah, we'll see that. IDOT. Yeah, IDOT. <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go to IDOT. All righty. <laughs> 
Well, you know, Jim, IDOT might sound like a play on words, but it's literally what this yes, young lady is doing. That's what we're doing. What's, what's the process here involved? Well, in this particular one, we're just uh, putting some, uh, some stick eyes on. You know, we, we purchased the eyes, and all we're doing is just sticking them right into the sockets that, uh, that are on the lures. So that has a glue, does she, has she put glue on the It's an adhesive the back. Yeah, okay. They just go right onto the bait and then we'll encapsulate everything with a, with an epoxy clear coat. Oh, I, over yeah. the top of over it. Over the to top sure. to hold it in, yeah. You know, and here's, a, here's an example, if I might pick this up. Every seams, every fishing lure has an eye. And uh, this, of course, is a bigger one. But for your tiny ones like that, that's why you need the smaller eye. Sure. Fish, fish wouldn't go for something without an eye, would they? Well. You gotta have an eye. She must have really good eyes, too, because I don't oh, know if I could do that job. Stick them in. Oh, a lot of times we'll paint them on, too, that small. We'll put a red dot on and come back with the black dot later after uh -huh. the, the red dries. <laughs> well, Jim, on this cart with all these trays, all the eyes have been dotted. We've already put all the eyes on them, yes, and uh, they're just waiting for the very last step, which is, a, which is an epoxy top coat, a clear coat, we call mm -hmm. it. Uh, so this will, these will get clear coated. Uh, and, and where does that happen? Well, that'll go right back into the paint shop, the same place we do the base coating okay. and color coating. All right. And then uh, we'll, we'll apply the top coat to them, the clear coat, and then everything that we clear coat today will go into what we call our big hot box. Can we take a look Absolutely. at it? Absolutely. And, and that's, that's true of every day, I guess, isn't it's, it? It runs all the time. Um, every day we're, we're throwing in however much product. In this case, uh, there's about six carts in here. Uh, and all this does is just a big dry room. You know, it heats up a little bit because of the heat lamps to maybe maybe 100 degrees, and it just circulates the air and cures that that epoxy top coat. All right. So that tomorrow morning, when 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 all these carts come out of here, it's 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 dried and ready to be packaged for shipping. Right. And you will. I mean, every every day you'll be packaging product because you got to get it out of here. Every you? day. Yeah. Every day. Okay, Jim, you come in in the morning and you've got all these trays mm -hmm. that have been in the hot box all night. Yep. And now they're ready to actually get shipped out. Yes. So you can start saying, well, okay, now we're going to actually finally get paid for some of this yeah, work. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? But these are finished now. These are done. Uh, they just need to get uh, removed out of the what we call our racking systems. The masking come off. And uh, these are some spinner baits for a customer. So that's what um, we're doing over here is we are uh, taking it out of the packaging or the, the racking mm -hmm. systems, uh, whatever it may be. And she's, in this case, she's counting an item that's, uh, that came off of, uh, off of our powder coat line. She's preparing it and counting them. Right. Most everything is weight counted. And, and it gets another inspection too, because I noticed, you know, she, she just picked one out that wasn't perfect, so. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it gets another inspection, very yeah. good. And so she'll, those will go to the customer after they've been weighed. You'll determine how many go in a bag by the weight. Absolutely, okay. by the weight and by the physical volume of it. And we were talking yeah. earlier when, when we showed these being painted. This is for that Arkansas customer, and they're going to use these in bulk. So I mean, they're going to they're going to make lures out of these, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So they just want to make sure that they get the right number, and how it comes packaged is not so that not all that important. Not to too that. critical. No. Yeah. No. O over here is another large group of, of things that are also getting ready to, to go out. And these, yeah, this is just going to has to get counted yet and. Mm -hmm. and and prepared everything that we do goes out in bulk yeah. you know so uh you know we don't you mail it out either by by u.s postal service or ups mainly ups right? yeah ups uh -huh. over here's a good example of of all the items that have to go out that are going to go out i guess they're going to go out today this, aren't they? yeah this should all leave today it's just uh it's come from the paint shop from the unpainted it's just it's been unloaded uh, all the different scenarios yep you know and here's where it just all comes together and she generally has it stacked that these this belongs to that customer and this belongs to uh -huh. that customer yep that's just the final final destination for it hits the box yep. well jeremy denine that looks like a mighty tiny little hole you're drilling yes it's just set there to give me a deep enough hole so i can attach the next part to the bait mm -hmm. You know, we, what we've been seeing so far of our tour of cast industries has been a lot of mass production work, but what you're doing now is you're creating like a prototype. Correct. Um, so a customer calls, 
and this happens all the time. They want you to create something new for them. Mm -hmm. And something that maybe isn't on the market yet or something that they have just dreamed up. And you all have the capability of doing that. And then if it works, you can create as many of them as you ever wanted to, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that's what you're doing. And I think that's interesting because when, when, when a customer calls, they might give you anything from a drawing that they kind of have in their mind to some of them have probably tried to, to even work on some, some rough products themselves and want you to refine them, right. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Here's another example here. This one came in from, from somebody who said, hey, I think I gotta have something like that. So you take this mold, it always starts with a mold, doesn't it? Or does it start? Starts with the master. Starts with the, the master. Show the us, prototype that I Show us the master, show us that master. This would be the master. It mm -hmm. actually uh, put together a couple pieces and get the head design and everything. Get That's it. why you were just drilling now, so you yes. can make room for that. Yep. Okay. Same, same concept. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. okay. And then get it put together. We would put it in a master mold, which has a bunch of different prototypes in it. Mm -hmm. And as long as the item is approved, we send them a sample. As long as it's approved, mm -hmm. we'll turn around and make a master set. Uh, so all the pieces are identical out of one cavity. Mm -hmm. And then we'll turn around and build a production mold out of it. I see. So we can put it into mass production. So you've got this on hand and you keep this on hand and anytime that cu customer or another orders that product, you've got the mold. Right. Mm -hmm. We go out there, get the components they need. Mm -hmm. If they want certain hooks or wires, we'll set it up that way and put it on the table. Excellent. Well, Ron Stevens, if you're not online these days, you're just, it's not happening for you, is it? Uh, that's all our business is online. We yeah. don't have a walk-in showroom. Yeah. You're part of Cast Industries, but your part of it is called Lure Parts Online. Right. right, Lure Parts Online. We sell all the components to finish the lures that you saw being built in the other building. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you, you make it available to people. Uh, probably in days past, many of your customers would get the catalog, and they were ordered by phone or they would write in orders, but now a lot of them do it online. Yeah, they? about 60% of the people order the products online, which is no different than the mail order thing years ago. Yeah, and, and this, but it, the, the big difference is this is a growing industry, whereas the catalog business is not a growing industry. It's, it's, we're really doing it going upwards. It's, the whole business is, the whole cons base is growing, uh, mm -hmm. and you see all companies getting into the online sales because you have to to compete. Yeah. But but you have you really have the advantage of, of being right across the parking lot from the place where these all this is being produced. It's all being made here. So you've got additional inventory to put onto the products that are being produced here. Right. We we can build the product over there the same day, move it over here. We can custom build products for people. Uh, we don't ever have run out of stuff because yeah. we make it right here. Yeah. And it gives us a bit of an advantage. Yeah. So let's take a look at this at this uh, website that you have, and this is Lure Parts Online. And uh, this, if I wanted to buy Cast Industries products, I'd just go right here, wouldn't I? Yeah. Go to LurePartsOnline.com. You'll see our homepage. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to buy Cast Industries products, for instance, bass jigs, just click on bass jigs. Well, we were making jigs earlier in this program. We were watching them ma being made. And here you can see a lot of the different varieties that we make, different mm -hmm. uh, styles. Um, then below here, you can pick out what size you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pick out colors. You can pick out whether you want weed guards, not weed guards. Um, a lot of just about anything a fisherman wants, we've got it here. Now, show me if I want to if I want to buy those jigs, but I want to accessorize them and I want to sort of individualize them to my to 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 suit me and what I what I need to catch fish. What, where, where do I go? Where do I click on for well, that? Well, let's say for example, you wanted a skirt and you wanted to pick out the color that you want, mm -hmm. we can go into uh, to our skirt area and we carry a lot of different skirts and you can pick out any size or color, mm -hmm. color pattern, texture, uh, materials. If it's out there, we have it. Mm -hmm. So you can pretty much customize it any way you like. Yeah. If you want to put a rattle on a jig, we, we sell the rattles to do that. So you just pick out mm -hmm. whatever type of rattle you like. And then I order that, and, and it comes to me, and then I put it all together at home. Is that the Correct. Way it works? We do uh -huh. not do assembly here. You do uh -huh. the assembly yourself. It, it, you can put a lure together for about half the cost of buying it retail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how many orders a day would you say you get online? We get about 100 orders a day. Wow. And we ship to about 50 different countries. We have people from all over the world buy our products and make their lures in their home country for their own fish. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
around as we speak. The orders are coming in from online. And you're busy right now because you were knocked offline for a while, weren't you? <laughs> well, so we you're were. real busy right now, but you're playing catch up right now. But this is where they come in and you, you get the orders, they just print them right off. Right? right, they come in from all over the world. Even our people entered into the uh, the online system and we print them off right there on the printer, just like you'd print something at home. Mm -hmm. And then the orders come, come over this way. And let's move around back here. And this is, uh, this is your inventory room. And you've got people who work at this desk here who are running around the inventory room picking orders, we, right? Yeah, we have about 10,000 parts to build uh, fishing lures, and an order <laughs> will come in with listing everything that a person wants, and then a picker will go out and find the product mm -hmm. and and count out the number they need. <clears throat> and we can count on the fly because we have scales that are pre-weighed to count each piece, and so if somebody wants five, we put five in a bag, mm -hmm. they want 10, we'll put 10 in a bag. And we basically custom pick every order mm -hmm. for our customers so they can get whatever they want in any quantity they like. Neat. I'd, I'd like that picking job. I think that'd be fun, you know. Plus, a get a lot of exercise. Well, you do it? get your exercise. Yeah. Okay, and then, okay, they pick them, they fill them, and they come around here, and, and I guess these orders are all ready to go. Huh? Yeah, these orders, are, as they're picked, they're over here, they're staged, they're set on a separate table, and then we have a person who comes in and double checks every order so that we can be as accurate as possible mm -hmm. going out. Uh, they'll make sure that the colors are right, the product sizes are right, and then once that's done, it goes over to shipping, mm -hmm. and then shipping will, will box at either UPS or U.S. Post Office, whichever the customer selects, and it goes out the same day. Fantastic. Well, we want to thank the Stevens Brothers for allowing us into Cast Industries and showing us around here. Fascinating operation. Uh, need to show you this. This is, uh, this is called a cowgirl. This is the hottest musky lure these days. And if you're thinking about uh, ordering this retail or online, they tell me that this is available online, the parts are, for 8 to $10 and retail, 35 bucks. Hottest item on the market. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.